Imagine walking through your day without ever touching a smartphone, a laptop, or a car. Hard, right? Now imagine that even if you had all these gadgets, they wouldn't work, because the tiny metals inside them, the ones that make screens glow, motors spin, and signals transmit, simply didn't exist. These metals are called rare earth elements, and they are the invisible engine powering almost everything in the 21st century. From the phone in your pocket, to the electric vehicle cruising silently down the street, from wind turbines generating clean energy, to the missile guidance systems that modern armies rely on, rare earths are everywhere, and yet almost nobody sees them. They are the quiet backbone of our high-tech world. Here's the twist. One country doesn't just have a stake in these elements. It controls the game. China dominates more than 90% of the global rare earth supply chain, from mining to refining to producing the materials that every modern device depends on. Imagine if a single country controlled nearly all the gasoline in the world. You'd understand the kind of power China holds today. This isn't just about economics. It's about geopolitics, strategy, and global influence. Whoever controls rare earths has a direct hand in shaping the future of technology, defense, and industry. And right now, that power sits squarely in China's hands. China's control of rare earths didn't happen overnight. For decades, the country has quietly built a complete industrial chain, from digging ore deep underground to refining it into the high-purity metals used in smartphones, electric cars, and advanced weapons. Other countries might have rare earth deposits, but very few have the infrastructure to process them at scale. Think of it like this. Having rare earths is one thing, but turning them into usable materials is another. It's like owning crude oil versus running an entire network of refineries, pipelines, and gas stations. Without that full system, the resource isn't nearly as powerful. China understood this early. By investing heavily in technology, refining capacity, and strategic planning, it gained a near monopoly on production. Today, over 90% of the world's rare earth supply flows through China. This dominance gives Beijing immense leverage, not just economically, but politically. Countries that rely on high-tech manufacturing, clean energy, or modern defense systems are essentially dependent on China's supply. This control sets the stage for a new discovery that could change everything, taking China's rare earth empire to an unprecedented level. High in the remote, rugged peaks of the Himalayas, Chinese scientists have made a discovery that could reshape the global rare earth game. Nestled in one of the most untouched regions on Earth lies a massive deposit of rare earth elements, over 40 million tons of ore, nearly matching China's entire known reserves. Estimates suggest its value could start at $12 billion and potentially skyrocket to $120 billion once fully developed and refined. This isn't a stroke of luck. China combined decades of geological expertise with cutting-edge technology to uncover this hidden treasure. Using satellites, drones, geological radar, and AI-driven data analysis, teams were able to map mineral-rich layers deep beneath the mountains, something traditional mining methods would have struggled to detect. The scale of this discovery is staggering. Not only does it reinforce China's existing dominance, but it also adds decades of supply to its rare earth reserves. In a world where these elements power everything from electric vehicles to fighter jets, this find is more than a mining victory. It's a strategic milestone that could redefine global technological and military power. What makes China's Himalayan discovery truly remarkable isn't just the size of the deposit, it's how they found it. Modern technology played a starring role. Teams used artificial intelligence to analyze geological data, satellites to scan remote terrain, drones to survey cliffs and valleys, and ground-penetrating radar to detect mineral-rich layers buried deep underground. Traditional exploration methods, boots on the ground, manual sampling, and guesswork would have taken decades in such extreme conditions. Instead, China turned the process into a high-tech operation, blending science, precision, and strategy. Every step, 
from mapping to data analysis was driven by technology, reducing risk and increasing accuracy in one of the harshest environments on Earth. This isn't just about mining minerals. It's a statement. It shows China's ability to merge resource mastery with technological innovation, giving it a decisive edge in global rare earth production. The discovery highlights how far the country has come, not only in controlling resources, but in using advanced methods to secure the future of high-tech industries. To understand why this discovery matters so much, think back to the 19th century and the gold rushes. Whoever struck gold controlled wealth, power, and influence. Today, the same idea applies. But instead of gold, it's rare earth elements. These 17 metals are invisible engines behind almost all modern technology. A smartphone contains around 10 grams of rare earths. A fighter jet like the F-35 uses over 400 kilograms, and a modern aircraft carrier needs up to 2,000 tons just to operate its systems. They are essential for electric vehicles, wind turbines, lasers, radar, missile guidance, night vision, and the semiconductors that power computers and smartphones. In short, rare earths are the backbone of the 21st century economy, military, and energy systems. Whoever controls them wields enormous influence. China already dominates the market. But this Himalayan find could be the equivalent of a modern gold rush, potentially reinforcing its control for decades. The stakes are clear. These metals aren't just valuable. They are strategic resources that shape the future of technology, defense, and global power. As news of China's Himalayan discovery spread, India quickly responded. Some Indian media called for cooperation, suggesting joint development with China and even involving Nepal and Bhutan. But behind the polite language, it's clear. India wants a stake in the prize. Geography gives India reason to act. The Himalayas stretch across borders, and this deposit sits near disputed territories. Since deadly skirmishes in 2020, tensions along the China-India border remain high, with troops still patrolling remote ridges. For India, this isn't just about mining. It's about strategic influence and national security. India also has broader ambitions. The country is trying to reduce reliance on China for critical materials, knowing that whoever controls rare earths controls technological and military progress. By pushing for joint development, India hopes to challenge China's monopoly before it becomes unbreakable. This move raises immediate questions. Is this the start of regional collaboration or the opening shot in a new rare earth rivalry between two Asian giants? The answer will depend on how both countries balance opportunity, power, and diplomacy. To see why countries are fighting over rare earths, you need to understand what these elements actually do. They're everywhere, yet almost invisible, like the gears inside a clock that keep everything moving. Without them, your smartphone wouldn't vibrate, your electric car wouldn't run, and modern military equipment wouldn't function. A fighter jet like the F-35 contains over 400 kilograms of rare earths, while an aircraft carrier may need up to 2,000 tons. These metals are essential for super magnets in electric vehicles and wind turbines, radar and laser systems, missile guidance, night vision, stealth technology, and the semiconductors powering almost all electronic devices. No rare earths mean no clean energy, no advanced computing, and no modern military capabilities. That's why China's control over the global supply is so powerful, and so concerning for nations like the United States, Japan, and India. Even a temporary disruption in supply could freeze entire industries. In short, rare earths aren't just minerals. They're the foundation of 21st century technology and warfare, and controlling them is controlling the future. Finding rare earths is only half the challenge. Getting them out of the Himalayas is another story entirely. These mountains are some of the highest and most rugged on Earth, with steep cliffs, unstable rock formations, freezing temperatures, and unpredictable storms. Roads are few and treacherous, and even heavy machinery struggles to operate at such altitudes. 
China spent two full years researching and planning before mining could begin, customizing equipment and training workers for extreme conditions. Every tool, every worker, and every step had to account for the harsh terrain and limited oxygen. Then there's the environmental cost. The Himalayas are ecologically fragile. Mining at this scale risks soil erosion, water contamination, deforestation, and disruption to rivers and ecosystems for decades. One misstep could provoke local resistance or international backlash. This makes extraction an immense technical, financial, and ecological challenge. It's a reminder that controlling a resource isn't just about discovery. It's about the ability to safely, efficiently, and sustainably turn it into usable materials. India may want a piece of the Himalayan rare earth treasure, but the reality is far more complicated. While the country has deposits and ambitions, it lacks the specialized infrastructure, refining capacity, and high-altitude mining technology required to operate in such extreme conditions. Building roads, processing plants, and safe extraction methods in the Himalayas would take years of investment, planning, and innovation. Environmental concerns also pose a significant barrier. Unlike China, India currently lacks large-scale experience in minimizing ecological damage during high-altitude mining operations. Any attempt to rush extraction could trigger local and international backlash, further complicating political and strategic goals. This gap highlights a critical point. Control isn't just about ownership, it's about capability. Even a powerful nation like India faces real-world obstacles when trying to match China's rare earth dominance. The strategic challenge isn't simply claiming territory, it's proving you can turn a raw resource into the high-tech materials that fuel modern economies and defense systems. While China and India size each other up over the Himalayan deposit, the United States is watching closely. Right now, the U.S. imports about 80% of its rare earths from China, creating a major vulnerability. Dependence on a strategic rival for materials that power fighter jets, satellites, and clean energy infrastructure is a serious risk. To reduce this dependency, the U.S. has been building partnerships with India, aiming to expand India's mining capacity and eventually create an alternative supply chain. Long-term plans involve quadrupling India's production, which would provide the U.S. and its allies with a reliable source of rare earths outside China. At the same time, America's involvement adds a global dimension to the Himalayan discovery. What might appear as a regional issue between China and India is now part of a broader contest for technological and military supremacy, with supply chains and diplomacy shaping the future of global power. The stage is set for a high-stakes triangular game where strategy, resources, and alliances will determine who controls the rare earths that underpin the modern world. Now the story becomes a geopolitical triangle. On one corner, China holds its powerful new Himalayan advantage, controlling over 90% of global rare earth production. On another, India is pushing to break into the market, leveraging geography, diplomacy, and growing mining ambitions. Watching from across the ocean, the United States is backing India, seeking alternatives to Chinese supply and aiming to protect its own technological and military interests. Nepal and Bhutan add another layer of complexity. Parts of the deposit may stretch into their territories, and both countries are small but strategically located. India hopes to pull them into a regional alliance, challenging China's dominance, while China has already invested heavily in infrastructure there through its Belt and Road projects. This triangle is more than a resource dispute. It's a strategic showdown. China wants to defend its supremacy, India wants a foothold, and the United States wants to reduce global reliance on China. Each move has consequences, and the next steps in these mountains could ripple across the global economy, energy markets, and defense capabilities. At this crossroads, the question is simple but explosive. Will China share its Himalayan rare earth treasure or defend it at all costs? From Beijing's perspective, there's little incentive to cooperate. China already dominates mining, refining, and production, controlling the industrial chain from ore to high-tech components. 
Sharing that advantage could weaken its leverage in global negotiations and strategic decision-making. Yet, refusing to cooperate isn't without risks. It could push India and the United States closer together, accelerate global efforts to find alternative supplies, or spark territorial disputes in the fragile Himalayan region. With Nepal and Bhutan caught in the middle, China's regional diplomacy could face unexpected complications. This isn't just about minerals, it's about who controls the foundation of future technology, military power, and energy infrastructure. The stakes are monumental. The next moves in these mountains could determine whether China solidifies a multi-decade monopoly or faces rising competition from neighboring powers and global allies. The world is watching, and the answer will shape the balance of power for decades to come. So here we are, at the intersection of geopolitics, technology, and the environment. China's Himalayan discovery could redefine its rare earth dominance for decades, while India, backed by the United States, seeks to break that monopoly. Nepal and Bhutan add extra layers of strategic complexity, making this far more than a simple mining story. It's a contest over the future of high-tech industries, clean energy, and military power. The ultimate question remains, should China cooperate with its neighbors and share this strategic resource or defend its position no matter the diplomatic fallout? The answer will influence not just Asia, but the global supply chains that touch every smartphone, car, wind turbine, and fighter jet in the world. Now we want to hear from you. Do you think China should share this rare earth discovery or hold it as a strategic advantage? Drop your thoughts in the comments, and if you want more deep dives into the stories shaping our world, from economics to geopolitics, subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. The next moves in the Himalayas could echo across continents, and the world is watching.